What's up everybody, Tommy Mutchler here, your lazy agent. And today we're gonna to be going over 10 ways that I'm using AI in my real estate business to do less and close more. Now we're gonna be talking about a few different AIs that you can use in your real estate business and that I personally use in my business. But first I have to mention probably the most popular AI right now, which has totally taken the world by storm in the last few months. In fact, if you haven't heard about it, I would be really shocked if you haven't. And you've probably already guessed that I'm talking about ChatGBT. Now, for those of you that don't know, ChatGPT is built by OpenAI and it is designed to have real human-like conversations. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it is scary good. It's not one of these dumb AIs that just have really basic conversations with you. No, this thing is incredibly smart and its writing skills are better than most people. In fact, it'll do just about anything for you when it comes to writing and so much more. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I've been using it as a personal assistant in my real estate business. Now, in order to to use ChatGPT, all you got to do is go to the website openai.com or just Google chatgpt.com and you are off to the races now. You're gonna see this menu right here. It's gonna give you some examples on what it can do. Literally, you could ask it anything and it will be able to give you an answer or help you with some things. Obviously, there's some like limitations. It only has a limited knowledge base up to the year 2021. So it can't tell you really modern things, but it, you can feed it data, which I'm gonna show you here in a little bit on how to do some more advanced stuff. But for example, let's just say we want to write a listing description. Now, this is really cool. Now, you could just say, hey, I want you to write me a general listing description. So for example, I would say, hey, Please write for my new Bellingham home. It's gonna start, it just starts typing right away. Here's a draft of a listing description of your new Bellingham home. Welcome to your stunning new home in the desirable Bellingham neighborhood. This spacious and immaculate maintained property bo boasts a modern open concept layout. The AI doesn't know if this is true. So what we can do is we can start feeding it more data. What I like to do is I'll start feeding it listing data. Now rewrite it for bedroom home and very close to walking rails. And so you can change it and I'll rewrite it, revise it. Obviously you can edit this yourselves. One thing I noticed, it is kind of long. So what I'm gonna do is ask it to shorten it. Now write it between 500 and 750 words. Now it's gonna have to finish loading for it to be done. Okay, now we'll hit send again. Now it's gonna make it a little bit shorter so it fits within my MLS uh, criteria. We only do 750 characters. So it's gonna write me a new version. And if you want to too, you can say, now make me three more variations of this description. And yes, I made spelling errors and it's gonna know. Now actually that seems longer than 750 words. Maybe it's not, I don't know. But it is going to town and just writing a full, full on thing. And you can just ask it to write you three more variations and it's gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna go ahead and stop it just because I want to get into some more content here. Now, some other ways I wanted to show you how to use this AI is for newsletters. I think it's a really cool tool to use to build out newsletters. Now, if I were to pull up ChatGPT, of course you can just ask it, hey, please make me a real estate newsletter on the Bellingham housing market. Of course, it's gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna give it a potential. Oh, it's giving me an outline. So I don't actually want that. I actually wanted to turn it into a newsletter. So I'd say, hey, now turn it into a fun newsletter. And it's gonna think, it's gonna take a second. So now we go ahead and click enter, have it turn into a newsletter, and there it goes. Welcome to the latest edition of the Bellingham Housing Newsletter. It's going down, this is pretty good. Now, I wanna take this to the next level, pretty basics. It's a good outline and all and things like that. But what I wanna do is, I'm gonna go to InfoSpark. Now, probably most of you have this where you can get market data. And let's see, let's go to Fast Stats. I'm gonna pull up a market report for my area, which is Whatcom County. And I'm gonna do the most recent one and I'm gonna click view report. And what's really cool is I'm gonna take all this data. So I'm just gonna highlight all of it. I'm gonna hit copy and paste and I'm gonna come back to the AI and I'm gonna say, okay, now make me a real estate newsletter for with the following data. Please highlight only the major talking points when it comes to housing and exclude all the condo data. And then I'm going to copy and paste. I'm gonna delete some of the stuff. I'm gonna put it in quotations and then boom, let it go. Here's a major talking points for the housing market in the Whatcom County. Now, sometimes it does it like this. It puts it out just in a list like this. But if you say now turn it into a fun newsletter and title it for 
January. Now this is December's report, but I want it to be out for January and let it go. And as you can see, it is actually giving me all this data that I have right here. So all this data that I fed it, it's actually writing that in the newsletter. So like right here you see, well, it looks like December was a bit of a slow month for new listings with a 19.1% decrease compared to the same time last year. So it's actually putting all the data from the MLS into something more digestible and fun to read. This is really, really cool and really, really powerful stuff. Again, only having a limited knowledge base back to 2021, being able to put fresh data into it and have it turn it into a newsletter is really cool stuff. Now, another really cool way to use the ChatGPT AI is to use it for blog research, but I would recommend not doing that just so you don't get in trouble with Google because Google can definitely can detect AI generated content and you want to make sure the content's really good. Well, let's go ahead and check out how you use it for blogging. First up, you can just ask it for ideas. You can just say, hey, I need 10 blog ideas for how to buy a house. And it's going, hey, here's 10 blog ideas. 10 step for buying your first home. This could be a comprehensive guide on the home buying process, the pros and cons of buying a fixer upper. These are actually some really good ideas. The pros and cons of buying a fixer up. That's a good idea. Oh, first time home buyer mistakes. Actually, I thought these were going to be kind of fluffy, but these are actually really good ideas. I'm going to actually say, hey, write me a blog post with the second idea that you gave me and make it sound like Joe Rogan wrote it. Hey guys, it's Joe Rogan here. I know you're thinking about probably buying a house and I've been there too. It's a big decision and there are a ton of things to consider. Man, this is really good actually. I don't know, maybe I should just use this actually. You know, the problem with using AI content in your blog or your, for SEO and stuff like that is if it's not good content, Google is going to punish it. But from what I understand, even if it is AI generated content, as long as the content is good and helpful and people want to consume, it, Google will promote that as far as I'm aware, but just be aware you might get punished if you use AI content. Now, here's some other cool things we can do. Let's just say, now give me 10 really clickable titles blog post. Again, basic research. It's going to help you give you some really good ideas. You should be doing this research on your own, but if you're really stuck or you just want some different variations on titles, blog ideas, this is a really cool tool to do this. Just to make sure the quality of the content is there. Now, the way I'm using the AI to write blogs is I'm taking my video scripts for all the videos I make and I'm uploading them into the AI and telling them, turn those video scripts. So again, it's unique, custom, original content that I made and turn it into a blog post. So again, here is a video script that I made a few months ago or a few weeks ago. Let's just go ahead and just copy and paste that and tell it to now turn this video script blog post for me and make it sound as close to the script as possible. And then there we go. 10 lazy hacks for realtors to do less and close more. Are you trying to work hard in real estate without seeing the financial rewards you deserve? Well, there you go. So cool. It's literally just writing the entire blog, like turning the video script that I had and just turning it into a blog post right now, which is really, really cool. Again, you got that unique original content. I might go through this and clean it up a little bit, but this is a good blog post that I could post on my website. Now, similar to blogging, you can actually use it to help you come up with video ideas and and write video scripts. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest, you should be doing your own research when it comes to making high quality videos. If you're gonna take YouTube seriously, you're gonna have to do the research, but ChatGPT can be a really good tool for helping you when you're stuck and generating some ideas, along with some basic research. Now, obviously I could say, hey, ChatGPT, give me 10 YouTube video ideas on moving to Bellingham. But another really cool thing I like to use chat GBT for is let's just say I wanna make a video on 10 reasons why you shouldn't move to Bellingham. And I can't think of all 10 reasons. Maybe I can think of five, maybe I can think of six. Now the reason I want 10 is usually when you're making a YouTube video, and this is just a YouTube pro tip for you guys, you usually wanna do lists in five or 10. Those numbers seem to get the most clicks on a video. So it's supposed to like seven things or, or eight things or 12 things, five and 10 are the best numbers. Now, if you can only think of nine things and you need one more, ask the AI to write up a few more ideas for you to make your video. So for this example is, can you give me 10 reasons why someone should consider not moving to Bellingham? Washington. Boom, I spelled Washington wrong. Wow, it just told me it can't give me this list, which is funny because it definitely gave me a list like two days ago. So I don't know why it's telling me not to. Let's try and reword it different. This is a good example of sometimes you just need to frame the questions a little bit different. I'm writing a video script on things people need to know before 
moving to Bellingham. That might be a deal breaker. Can you give me 10 things people need to consider before moving here? So there we go. We just asked it a different question or we just asked it a little bit differently and it's giving me the response that I want. So again, there we go. The weather, Bellingham has a moderate climate. The job market, you know, might not be for everyone. The cost of living might be too high. The availability of housing. So it's giving me lists. You just might have to ask the question you want a different way because it doesn't want to produce harmful content or say anything negative or disparaging about a person or place or anything like that. But if you rephrase your question correctly, you can usually get it to do what you want it to do. Now, next up, I want to talk to you about using it for content creation. I think it's pretty obvious. Obviously, we have blog posts, listing descriptions, email newsletters. There's just a ton more things you can do with it. You can also use it to create social media posts like Facebook posts, Instagram posts, and so much more. Literally anything you can think of that you need help creating any side of content. Like I did, let's just say you need a bio, like make me a real estate bio for me. My name is Tommy Mutchler and I've been a realtor for seven years and have helped hundreds of clients. Yes, I know I spelled a bunch of things wrong. I just want to show you that it can like detect that you spelled wrong and it will know what to do next. Um, a managing broker with real broker. I've lived here my entire life in the Bellingham area and I am a expert negotiator. I spelled negotiator wrong. I'm like, hi, here's a possible real estate bio for you. There you go. And it's just gonna start creating one for you. And it looks like it had a little bit of a hiccup, but I figured it out and you can change it however you want. You can say, okay, now make it longer. And of course it's gonna do that. Of course you can ask for different variations. You can do whatever you want. Again, any type of content creation you need made, it's gonna do that for you, especially for like any listing promotion or marketing materials or whether you're creating content for like postcards or annual newsletters, it's gonna be able to create basically any type of content you want, which is pretty cool. Now, I know we've talked a lot about content creation and using it to create content, but that's literally not the only thing you can use it for. There's so many other uses that you can use this AI for, and this video is barely gonna cover any of them. Another really cool one I want to go over with you is basic research. For example, most of my clients come visit me out of state, and I had a client recently asked me for a list of affordable hotels. Now, obviously, I can just go to Google and create a list of cheap hotels and email to them, but that would probably take me, what, five minutes, 10 minutes, way too long. Why would I do that when I just literally have the AI do it for me, which is what I did. For example, I just said, hey, write me an email for my real estate clients who are visiting from out of state with a list of affordable hotels in the Bellingham, Washington area with their contact info. And bada boom, bada bing, there it goes. It is writing me a list of hotels. Look at that, it's including the phone numbers, it's including which hotel to stay at, and it even has a nice little intro and outro. Now you can take this to the next level. I actually like this so much that I actually saved it as a template for me in my CRM. I did modify it though a little bit. I did ask it, can you also include a list of luxury hotels as well? Now it looks like it just actually made it into a separate email. So now I'm gonna say, now combine them into one email. So now it should have my list of luxury and affordable hotels in one. Again, you might just need to play with it a little bit. Now I've already done this a couple of times. I've already made some templates, but literally you can do this for anything. Like you can make a list of all the Thai restaurants, all the American food restaurants, all the best parks, all the best hikes and trails. If your client asks you for something, you can go ahead and just quickly ask the AI to make that list for you or create that content for you. So you can then send it to the client, which they're definitely going to appreciate because you were able to provide them a ton of value and do all this work for them, even though you just have the AI do it, they're going to see you going above and beyond help them out. Now, next up on our list is creating follow-up texts and emails or appointment setting texts and emails. Now, I think you already get the idea at this point, you just ask the AI to make you something and it's going to make it for you, which is what we're going to do right here. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I've been using it lately to test out some new scripts. Now, for those of you that don't know, I love the idea of mastering the follow-up game and just mastering follow-up and creating high converting 
forwarding scripts and emails. In fact, I have a ton of free scripts and texts and email drip campaigns and follow up campaigns that you can click and download down below in the description, totally free. Just click the link and sign up and you'll get them all for free. But that said, I've been using the AI lately to come up with some new ideas and maybe refine a lot of my scripts and follow up campaigns that I've been using to see if I can maybe get some new ideas and get a higher conversion rate on my follow up campaigns. For example, let's just go ahead and ask it to create me a real estate sales letter for a buyer client telling them why they should hire me to be their realtor and use a CTA at the end. So call to action, right? So CTA at the end, at the end of the email to book a consultation with me. Now let's go ahead and see. Now, dear buyer, are you in the market for a new home? Look no further as a seasoned real estate professional with the years of experience, blah, 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 blah. So this might be a better cold email. Of course, you can refine this. But let's just go ahead and make some text messages. Now make me some real estate text messages or following up with buyer clients asking them how the home search is going and if they'd like to see any homes this weekend enter and let's go ahead and see hi i just want to check in and see how the home search is going are you finding any properties are you interested in i'm free to show you some homes this week let me know if you'd like to see anything when you're available and look it's going to create a few more for me so it's going to create a whole bunch for me we can say hey now make me 10 more variations and it's going to go ahead and do that right it's going to create me a bunch of more text messages different ideas different variations on text that i can send out to follow up and convert more clients now i think you guys have a pretty good idea and understanding of the potential of the content creation and the literally the limitless opportunities you have when it comes to content creation with the chat gbt ai but i want to dive into some more advanced features that you may or may not know about first up is tech support. Now I know what you're thinking, tech support, what would I use the AI for tech support? The AI makes great tech support. If you need help with some software, troubleshooting some issue that you have, it literally knows how to fix your issue. Recently, I was having some issues with my email provider. I use MailerLite to send out my newsletter. And I had a question where I wanted to know if I move a lead out of a particular group, will the automation stop following up with that lead? And I could not find any help any articles explaining whether or not this would be the case. So I literally just asked ChatGBT saying, I have a support question for Mailer Light. If I move a lead out of a group, will the automation for that group continue to follow up with the lead or will it stop when the lead is moved out of that group? Enter and it actually answered my question when it comes to software. Again, this information isn't necessarily on the internet. If it is on the internet, I couldn't find it. I searched their help and support deck. I could not figure it out. Now I asked even more advanced questions. Like how do I fix this particular problem? Like in Sam Hart, which is a software I use to host my courses that I have for the lazy agent. I asked it like, can I change the payment method for a group or a product that has already been created? If so, how do I do that? Yes, it says I can. And it literally gives me step-by-step -step directions on how to change my payment method or a product that I created. That's really, really cool. Really, really powerful stuff. And again, just goes to show you how powerful chat GPT can be in your everyday life, whether or not you have a question, you have a problem. I know a lot of us like to go into like Facebook groups and ask like, how do you do this thing? Literally, you can just ask chat GPT on how to do something. And it's probably going to give you an answer within seconds, which for me saves me a ton of time. Now, the last way to use use chat GPT is you can actually create your own programs and software and you can actually have it help you build anything software related that you want. So for example, if you wanted to, you could say, hey, chat GPT, can you help me use your software? Because they have an open API that you can access and create a robot just like you to follow up and nurture leads and convert them into booked appointments. And click enter and literally look it says sure i'd be happy to help you build a chatbot using the open ai's api software now it's already asking me a question before we get started do you have a specific programming language or framework that you would like to use to get started now i'm just going to say which one do you think is the best now i'm just going to say let's go ahead and use java because 
I don't know much about programming. I did a little bit in college, but I don't know too much. Now it's literally giving me step-by-step -step instructions on what to do here. And it will even write you code. Like it will literally create code for you. Now you have to know how to use that code and plug it in where it needs to be plugged into. So obviously this is gonna be a little bit more advanced, but literally ChatGPT will help you do exactly that and create a robot just like it to follow up and nurture your leads. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, this is the only thing I do not use ChatGPT for. I would love to use the, this ChatGPT software to create my own AI and follow up and nurture and convert my leads, but that's just way too much work. And as you know, I'm the lazy agent. I don't really like to work that much. So I just use the AI that's built in the Chime CRM to nurture and convert my real estate leads into piping hop deals. Yes, I have smart plans that follow up and nurture my leads, especially my new leads, but any leads that's just sitting on my CRM, for example, let's take a look real quick. If someone was to come onto my website and literally just click around, look at some houses for sale, maybe they're scrolling through and they haven't been to my website in a while. Literally the AI will start texting people, not right here with the chat bot in the corner, but literally just start texting them. Of course they have to be in my CRM for this to start working, but there's a lot of different parameters where, you know what, it sees that they've been active on my website. They looked at one property five times in the last 24 hours. The AI is gonna start texting that lead to try and schedule an appointment. Same thing with scheduling a showing, you know, they request a showing, they share a listing. Let's just say they share a listing with like a friend or a family member or on Facebook. It's gonna try and schedule a showing with them. So the AI is really, really cool inside of Chime. Huge fan of it. You get it for free if you're with Real Broker. So if you're with Real Broker, try it out. It's free, why not? And if you already have the Chime CRM, it's actually pretty cheap AI to use. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest. I only get a couple of deals a year out of it. And now obviously the year, it's January. So you're not gonna see any closed transactions for this month. Uh, it is working a few leads right now, but it usually gets me about one or two deals a year. And again, it's just monitoring my database. So inside of my Chime CRM, it's just gonna monitor my leads based off certain activity they take on my website, which I'm gonna be honest is much, much easier just to use this AI than to build my own from scratch. But if you have the technical know-how, may as well use ChatGPT to build an AI like it because it is really good at talking to people and the conversations sound very realistic. But with that said, I want to know how are you guys using ChatGPT or AI in general in your real estate business? I'm genuinely curious. I really like the idea of automating more of our business so we can do less and close more. And if you're interested, click right here for a video on how to use the Chime CRM. If that's a CRM you're thinking about purchasing or already have and you just want to dive deep into it and learn how to use it to automate your entire real estate business like me, the lazy agent, which is a CRM I use to automate my business and make over $332,000 last year in GCI working part-time. With that said, my name is Tommy Mutchler, your lazy agent, and I will see you in the next one.